In this video, I am going to demonstrate the use of for loops and for each loops uh, with an array. Uh, I'm going to create an array using a for loop and traverse it using a for and for each loop so you can see how this thing works. So let me start off with um, my class, my template for loops. And in this thing here, in class for loops, remember that class names are capitalized. Then my public static void main string args. Remember to put that space in between the parentheses for parentheses spacing. Three. And then here's my main method and method main. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do three things. I'm going to create an array of integers um, or declare it and then actually fill it up using a for loop and then print it out using a for and for each loop. So um, I'm going to create an, an array of integers. So int brackets that tells the compiler that I'm going to create an, in, uh, an array. I'll call it nums. And this is going to be new int. So a new thing of integers and I'll put 10 elements, make it so they can hold 10 elements. Okay, so that's created an array. There's nothing in it uh, at the moment, but now I'm going to fill it in. So here's one use of a for loop. For um, int index, and I'll run through, I'll, I'll type it in first and I'll explain it. Zero index less than nums dot length index plus plus one, two, three. So what this line in the for loop does is it, it's actually three parts. It's a, it's a variable declaration. So I'm going to create an, an integer called index, which is the index for each element in the array, like each um, slot in an uh, A carton. Set it equal to zero first. And as long as that's less than the number of items in the array, which is 10, um, as long as it's less than that, I'm going to do whatever I put in this uh, line here. This may be one or two or three or 10 lines of code. And I'm going to, uh, after that, increase the index by one. So basically, the loop occurs right here, it starts here, goes to the contents of the whatever I have written here, goes back, increases by one, it keeps looping around. This is your loop. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say nums index equals, and I'll say index times two. So I'm going to put in multiples of two. So again, initialize the index to zero, and I, I use the word index because that's what each element in the um, array is referred to uh, by an index number. I'll say, is it, is it less than 10? So zero less than 10, true. Complete this statement. So take the value of zero, multiply by two, which is still zero, put in the zeroth element, increase it by one, and then loop through here. To see if that actually works, let's use a, another for loop to print out. For index equals zero index nums dot length index plus plus and I'm going to use a system dot out dot print line to should put an n four here as well to print it out system dot dot print line nums index and let's compile that and see if it works. Compile uh, oh this is int int index. Compile looks like it works. Close that right click it and if I bring the window over here it looks good. So I created an element, an array of 10 elements and I fill it in with multiples of two. And if I go back to the code here, you see that um, the second for loop here does that. Uh, one question that often comes up is that I have two for loops here, and this is called index, and so is this one. Um, sometimes you will be inclined to call it index one and index two because you think that they are will conflict with one another. But since it's in a block, basically because the this index is being used within a beginning and end curly brace, once these this block is over or once the loop is done and we're out of this curly brace that variable ceases to exist so it's pretty much gone 
And when I start a new one, the compiler has no idea that it ever existed before. So we're safe in using it uh, again. The for each loop is a kind of a shortcut um, for loop. So I'll say for and I'll say num. Just for clarity, I'm going to put here system dot out of print line. Uh, because I'm going, to, I'm going to be printing it twice. So the way that the way this is read is as following: for each integer, and I'll call it num. This is like a temporary variable. And I don't use the word index because I'm not actually referring to an index. I'm actually going to pull one number out of the array, nums, and store it in here temporarily. So I'm not using an index. I'm actually pulling something out of the uh, array. If you want to use the analogy of an egg carton, here I referred to an egg in the egg carton by the slot it was in. Here I'm actually pulling it out temporarily or making a copy of it actually in this variable and then just using it directly. You can see here I had to use the uh, bracket notation to actually print out the number of the index uh, at the index. Here I'm actually pulling out a copy of it and then printing it out. So it's a little bit cleaner if you take a look at here for printing things out. And that's the that's the major use of for each loops is to print out uh, elements uh, in an array. If you start modifying things using a for each loop, you can create some errors, uh, which are called concurrent modification exception errors, which you, you'll probably see later. But let's compile it and see what happens. Compile. No errors, run it. And so now you can see here's the first time around and the second time around. So that's a quick tutorial on uh, for loops, how to fill up an array using a for loop, print it out, and then also the use of a for each loop to print things out as well.